Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute. That's because I've been only trying to buy things that genuinely interest me. I mean, the channel is not supported by any corporations or sponsors. So everything I get, I gotta buy. So unfortunately, if there's some things that you're interested in and you don't see on the channel, it's probably because I'm not interested in it myself. But here, I got a pair that I'm definitely interested in. It's a lot to talk about with this one. Let's take a look at the box, take a look at the shoe. As I always say, first we'll talk about the shoe and then we're gonna go ahead and talk about the shoe. Let's go ahead and get right into it. I will continue to preach all year, 2023. Like I always say, I'm a sucker for a special box and we got a special box here today. And of course you have what appears to be a standard Nike Air box, except this one has some the Boss A's, the Ama Minier logo all over the shoe. Now I've got this whole ambiance going on with my studio here. So I'm not sure the camera's gonna pick up the nice raised letter of the A here, but trust me, it's there. All black box, Nike Air, you know the vibe. I'm yet co-branding at its finest. As usual, size tag reads Jordan Airship PE Summit White Black. Summit White and Black. That's not the first time we had a colorway released that way this year, but we'll talk about that in one minute. Open the top, and of course, more I'm I'm yet co-branding right there on the inside. Hopefully, the camera will pick this up. I'll go ahead and pick this guy around for you. You've got that A, that I'm I'm yet A there. Very nice, very nice touch. Co-branding again. If anyone knows how to co-brand, it's I'm I'm yet. What I love about this particular release is they kept it OG with the Airship pamphlet. Now, you guys are gonna know, I'm not new to this, I'm true to this when it comes to the Airship. I mean, kinda sorta. But at the end of the day, this is not the first time you've seen this on my channel. We have the Airship pamphlet, and of course, on the inside, it gives you the tech specs of the Airship, a little bit of history lesson behind it. Very cool, if you have not seen this, I definitely encourage you guys to buy an Airship. Again, more on that later, and check this out. Very nostalgic, very cool, just like they did back in 1984. As per usual with Arm Arm in the Air releases, I think every Arm Arm in the Air release has had this co-branding on the wax paper. The A, the Arm Arm in the Air A, the Arm Arm in the Air A. And this is nice. This shoe's actually individually wrapped. Pretty cool, waxy paper. And there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to bring to you the Jordan Airship PE X Arm Arm in the Air, Summit White Black. Ah uh, yes, the airship, the one before the one. And if you know, you know, basically the history of it is this was a shoe Jordan wore before he wore Jordan one, but again, later on. The bottom, the sole here, that should be reminiscent to you. It's very similar to an Air Jordan one. I think it's almost exact same as an Air Jordan one. Again, the airship designed by the legend himself, rest in peace, Peter Moore. He took this sole and adopted the Air Jordan one to it. But hey, I mean, self-explanatory, right? As you can see, using the lost and founds, Nike doubled down on using the ashy sole to kind of give that vintage look on both particular shoes. Coming up to the midsole of the shoe, you have what is one of my favorite touches, this aged midsole. And I know a lot of people are off the vintage vibes. A lot of people don't like the aged look, but right now I'm still riding that wave. I mean, it gives us some uniqueness. And now that being said, the more they produce these shoes, the less unique they become, but I digress. Maybe the fact of the matter is I'm actually antiquing myself. I mean, this shoe is only a year younger than me. And so, I mean, I kind of get why they want to go with that age aesthetic. Some people age like fine wine and others not so much. But all that being said, here you go, age midsole. I do like that about the particular shoe. Now here you have the Summit White Leather Upper. Now the leather itself is not too bad, it's not the best. I mean, it's not shattered backboard quality, but it's not stiff quality like some of the 85 highs. Now the way it was explained to me, or the way that I have explained it before, that leather is either thicker because the amount of leather that is laid on top of each other for thickness, or it's the amount of polyurethane coating that they spray on a shoe. Here in 2023, with the release of the remastered version 2 Jordan 1, they had reduced the amount of polyurethane coating, and so you have this a little bit softer, a little bit more supple leather. Now, again, this is not nothing to write home about as far as leather quality, but it is much better than other airships. Now, the actual swoosh and the collar confuse me just a tiny bit because it's not actually like leather leather. It feels like a smooth or very, very smooth suede or some kind of durabuff. It's not the cracked leather that we're used to seeing. It just has a different feeling material to it, and I actually like it because it brings a contrast to the smooth full grain leather that's on the upper. Again, one of the coolest things about the airship that separates it from the Air Jordan 1 among other things, of course, is the separate stabilizer straps here on the bottom. As you see, they fly away, and the portion that it covers is only attached by this elastic piece right here, which gives you some actual room for growth, just in case you have a wide foot on your shoe. I've always loved that about the Airship releases. Coming up to the tongue, we have this off-color, this cream-colored tongue, again, adding to that vintage vibe. I always like that. I mean, this is one of my favorite touches on this shoe, as well as another Airship that I'm gonna show you later on. But again, that makes the contrast of the lace really pop in my opinion. And real quick, speaking of laces, you have three laces in total. You have the white lace that comes with the shoe. You have this aged rustic looking one, which is probably the one I'm gonna go with. I'll let you guys know at the end of the video. And of course you have this black one that goes with the rest of the Summit white shoe. 
In addition to a spare pair of laces, we had this nice little keychain or this hang tag, whatever you want to call it, with the Alma Menier logo. And hey, I mean, pretty nice touch. It looks like some kind of anodized metal. Pretty nice, pretty heavy, so I'm assuming it's pretty good quality. Again, Alma Menier, they know how to do it. Continuing on with this tongue tag, you have this black and white tongue tag with Nike Air on it. Again, co-branded at its finest. You have Alma Menier written in that beautiful cursive. Man, they know how to co-brand, I'm telling you. You have a black insole of the shoe with a white jump man, of course, 365 there. Now, shout out to Kari Sneaker Fetish here on YouTube. You guys should check his video out. It's a lot to digest among just this shoe. A shout out to him for pointing out what 365 means. In his video, he described that 365 is actually a symbol of the working relationship between Nike and Alma Menier. As he describes again, Nike and Alma Menier now have an exclusive partnership, and 365, of course, being the number of days in the years, kind of lets you know that they're going to be working hand in hand for some kind of duration. We do know that there's at least one more Jordan silhouette, the Air Jordan 5, coming in two distinct colorways. Shout out to Z Sneakerhead for posting this picture up of the recently released uh, first look of the shoe. Hopefully another one I'll be able to get. As Sneaker Fetish also points out, 365 is also the apparel collection releasing soon. And of course, Alma Menier, they know how to do apparel like no other. On the top of the collar of one shoe, you have the A for Alma Menier. And of course, you have Nike Air in the other. I love when the brand does this. It's very cool, very slick. A plus touch. I should probably be more responsible, turn my light up and show you guys with the camera. But shout out to Mr. Unloved One, who I believe he was the first one to show me at least that the A, the A logo on Alma Menier is actually stitched into the collar. I mean, I'll try to get some B-roll, like I said, but this is really nice touch. And I mean, they went all out with this shoe as far as co-branding better than they did the first one in a minute. And lastly, one of my favorite, favorite things, I know I say that a lot, but this dirty age vintage look that's on the midsole is actually here on the lining of the lace holes too. And I think that's really nice. I mean, and a lot of times, when shoes come out and they give it this vintage vibe, they kind of ignore or don't look at some parts that would get dirty or would get aged. And on top of uh, the lining of the lace holes, it's definitely one of those spaces. So shout out to Amma Menier for the nice touch. So that's pretty much it for the construction and makeup of the shoe. I'm forgetting anything. But now, of course, let's talk about the discourse surrounding the shoe, as usual. Now, real quick, I don't know why I do this to myself. My brain just works a certain way. But here we go again. You have the one before the one, the Nike Airship. The Air Jordan 1, Amma Menier. The Air Jordan 2, Amma Menier. The Air Jordan 3, Amma Menier. The Air Jordan 4, Amma Menier. Air Jordan 12, Amma Menier in white. Air Jordan 12, Amma Menier in black. Maybe one day. I don't know. Now, as you can see, Amma Menier has a theme. They have a look. And it's mostly black or white colorways with these dark earth tones. Obviously, that's deliberate. James Widner, who's the founder of Amma Menier and the Amma Menier Umbrella Group, he likes to tell stories about struggle, about getting it out of the mud. So a lot of the shoes are going to be drab, dreary. They're going to speak of this kind of experience where you're coming out of from nothing. And a lot of times that seems bleak, it seems dark. So that might explain why it's not a big, bright color palette to this particular pair of shoes. But that's the beauty of it. You have quilted insoles. You have aged parts of the sole here. You have these touches that really punch up the shoe to make it like a much more mature and adult shoe as opposed to some really bright colorways but more so than just the actual colors of the shoe each shoe also has a theme to it and as i mentioned sometimes they represent black struggle now the discourse that surrounds these shoes is because oftentimes the message is lost in translation and of course translation means release dates i mean we have shoes that meant something to a particular culture and when people from outside that culture use their resources to undermine the message of the shoe and also profit off the backs of those who actually the shoe is intended for then it becomes a problem. So at the end of the day, yes, this is just rubber and some synthetic leather, but depending on who you speak to, depending on who you are, and depending on how you want to spend your particular money, these shoes carry so much more than just the hype surrounding them and how they look on your feet. And the airship itself carries on that tradition. Now the Whitaker Group does a great job of putting together these beautiful visuals that are heartfelt and passionate and very powerful at times. And in this particular case, the message is understanding the why. I also thought I saw somewhere that an additional message about this shoe was to protect women, protect black women in particular. I'm gonna try to find that somewhere. I think Alma Menier put it up on their Twitter, but again, Alma Menier does the due diligence with putting out messages, and a lot of times those messages pertain to and about black people. So as usual, shout out Alma Menier for all their hard work and continuing to amplify black voices. Now, of all the shoes I've shown you with Alma Menier branding, they are not new to the airship. There was a blue pair that is limited to 2,300 pairs, which I was not and probably will not be able to get my hands on. Very nice shoe. 
But between that one and this one, for I can tell because I've never seen the other one in person, I do think that this is probably the superior airship. And it is funny what scarcity and hype does to a shoe because that Alma Manier collaboration on an airship is somewhere around $500 to purchase. So do that information as you will. And even this particular airship, although less scarce in nature, still hovering for almost double the retail price, as opposed to the Pine Green, the Team Orange, and the Tech Gray airship. Now, these particular shoes, all these shoes are under retail on your favorite aftermarket sites. It's really the last shoe that I reviewed on my channel and I sang its praises to high heaven. I'm not gonna jump out the window and say it's sneaker candidate of the year. It's not even close to that, but I'm telling you right now, for under retail for less than $100 on some sites with sales, this shoe is fantastic. Great neutral gray colorway, pretty good materials. I mean, it's an airship history, the whole shebang. This shoe is so good in fact, although this collaboration exists, I'm struggling to place this one above it. Both have their pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses, but damn, I mean, we have some pretty nice shoes. And now that I'm looking at them kind of side by side or one on top of the other, I still would give the edge to the Alma Manier airship, although the Tech Gray one, still very, very nice. I do plan to include eventually the University Gold colorway in the airship, as well as the two Every Game Pack, both the Diffuse Blue and the Red colorway. So hopefully those will be coming to the channel sooner rather than later. But that just goes to show you, I do have a deep love and appreciation for the Nike Airship. As far as sizing, these do run a little bit narrow in the toe. As you can see, this has a much slimmer profile than your typical Air Jordan 1 and a much stubbier nose with the short toe box here. So keep that in mind. But that's pretty much the Alma Manier Airship in a nutshell. Unfortunately, bots absolutely cooked the Alma Manier website when this shoe launched. So I don't know how many people actually got their hands, like how many actual factual people got their hands on the shoe. I saw more success with the Discord servers as well as EQL raffles actually hitting on the website itself. Not sure I'm actually gonna be able to launch this video, but the chance that you may actually have a pair just show up if you actually hit on the EQL raffle. That's because there was no shipping and tracking information that was emailed to folks when they won. Very bizarre. In addition to that, a little tidbit I'm pretty salty about that the folks in the Discord and maybe even the ones who won on the actual website didn't pay shipping, but the people who hit on EQL actually paid $15 for shipping. Bizarre. You guys, let me know down in the comments, how do you feel about the Airship? How do you feel about the Nike Airship PE co-branded with Amum and Year all over it? I like it, very good, top tier for me, let me know. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys some on-foot looks, give you the lace swap options that come with the shoe, nothing more, nothing less. And that's pretty much it. You guys let me know if you enjoyed this video. Please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for more reviews. And I hope to see some of you guys in Cincinnati if you know you know. Until then, I've been Jay Shoe Fanatic, and I'm out of here. Better than 2020 version. Oh, right. And I had it.